Fancy followed Kit's pointing finger to a circle of mushrooms, at least two feet in diameter, nearly hidden in a copse of dogwood trees. The mushrooms that formed the circle weren't storybook-friendly red caps, but pig's ears, slimy brown mushrooms that looked like the flesh of a creature had been scratched off and left to rot on the ground. When Fancy curled her lip, Kit said, "'Beggars can't be choosers. Come on, and let's get this idiocy over with.' They made their way to the pig's ears, and as they stood before the circle of mushrooms, a hawk screamed somewhere above them. Otherwise, the woods were unnaturally silent, as though simply being near the fairy ring had moved the sisters at least halfway out of the world. Fancy could feel the laces of time and space wanting to unravel. She just had to find the right place to tug. Fancy marked the starting point with a photo of Daddy, taken a month before he'd been sent away. He was doing a muscle man pose with his shirt off, which was hilarious because Daddy was almost as skinny as Kit. "'What's the picture for?' Kit asked, watching Fancy position the photo just so against one of the mushrooms. "'To help me focus. Shh!' She looked at the picture for a long time, until she could almost see Daddy's blood pumping through his biceps. She held the image in her mind, willing a door to open to him, the way she tried to will herself to see him in the kinetoscope. Hopefully, today she'd have better luck. Ready? Kit rolled her eyes, which Fancy took as an affirmative. One, two, three, go. The sisters began walking in opposite directions around the outside of the fairy ring. Fancy grabbed her sister. Not that way. Counterclockwise. We never go counterclockwise. Maybe that's why it's never worked. Now come on. After a few minutes of circuitous walking, Kit said... I feel like a dork. She scowled at the hawk screeching in the treetop, like all the birds are laughing at us. How many times we gotta go around this thing? Fancy thought it over. Thirty-six. Thirty-six? That's how long it's been since we last saw Daddy. Besides, three is a magic number, and thirty-six is a multiple of three. There's no such thing as magic. Just do it, Kit. What did I tell you about ordering me? Fancy looked over her shoulder. You said somebody's got to do it, so it might as well be me. Wow, is it smart-ass day? Kit took a swipe at the back of Fancy's head and only just missed. You should have told me. I'd have bought you a present. Fancy squealed as Kit chased her around the fairy ring, managing to stay just ahead of her. Just curtsy every time I walk by. That'll be present enough. Ooh, you think you bad? Kit sang. Huh? You think you bad? Bad enough to make you mad, Fancy sang back, laughing, then squealing as Kit grabbed at the middle of her back. But the old playground rhyme came to an abrupt end as a storm gray hawk swept out of the dogwood tree and attacked Fancy. She shrieked and dropped to the ground, batting the hawk away with one arm, the other shielding her face from its vicious yellow talons. Come on, bird, said Kit, yelling over the screeching hawk. Everybody likes street rhymes. How about this one? Down, down, baby, down by the roller coaster. Kit, let me sing to it. Kit grabbed the bird under its long, pointed wings and flung it high into the air. Music has charms to soothe the savage beast. Miss Mary, Mac, 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 all dressed in. You are not charming that bird. Fancy yelled as the hawk wheeled above the trees. Instead of going back to its nest, the hawk zeroed in on the sisters again, but this time it dived for Kit, its hell-red eyes full of rage. Maybe it's death, said Kit, waiting patiently for the hawk, her switchblade in hand. But the hawk's flight halted in midair. The sisters gaped at the motionless bird in silence. It could have been stuffed and mounted. It was so unnaturally frozen and centered directly over the fairy ring. The fairy ring. It worked, cried Fancy. She grabbed Kit. We opened a door. Kit circled the hawk, careful to stay far from the mushrooms lest she get trapped as well. By the time she reached her sister's side once again, she was frowning. If that's a door, why didn't the bird disappear? It's just stuck up there. Maybe this is all we can see from our side, and where the bird is, it's actually flying around and having a great time. I don't think so, Fancy. Kit's dubiousness had given way to shock. Look at it. The hawk molted, shedding feathers as quickly as an ill-used feather duster. In no time, it was nude, like a plucked chicken, its skin nubby and goose-pimply, 
as though without its feathers it had caught a chill. Seeing the hawk in this new, pathetic state made Fancy want to help, even though it had tried to kill her. She began to reach into the fairy ring. No! Kit snatched her back. You want me to stand here and watch that happen to you? What was happening was that the hawk was losing its flesh and bone the same way it had lost its feathers. Huge chunks of it were simply falling away and hitting the ground inside the ring like rain. But the pieces weren't staying on the ground. The flesh rapidly decomposed as soon as it touched the soil, until it had disappeared into the earth and into the pig's ears. The mushrooms were no longer slimy folds, but baseball-sized balloons. I bet those ain't even mushrooms, just something disguised as mushrooms, something carnivorous. Kit pulled Fancy back until Fancy was half hidden behind her, well away from the pig's ears. Whatever it is, it ain't a door. Kit turned to face her. And even if it was, Fancy, what's the big plan? Run away to fairyland like the lost boys? Fancy crossed her arms. Not fairyland. Where then? Where the hell are you trying to go? I don't know. Fancy slumped against a tree. Fairy rings are just doors. Doors open and close in Portero all the time. If we found the right door, we could do anything. Get rid of Franken, rescue Daddy. What? It's not like I don't know it's a long shot, but it happens. Remember that story about the boy who played hide-and-seek with his little brother? He hid inside the broom closet under the stairs, and when he came out, like, five minutes later, he was five years younger. Let me get this straight. You want to go back in time to stop Daddy from killing? I know it's a long shot, she whispered, and looked away from the incredulity in Kit's face, trying not to feel like an idiot and failing. Kit pulled Fancy away from the tree and into a loose embrace. He wouldn't have stopped. It's like with me and Franken. Once you get a taste for blood, nothing else satisfies. Kit kissed her fingers like a gourmand. Stop joking. She hid her face in her sister's neck. Sometimes I feel like he's dead already. Everybody dies, fancy pants. Kit steered her sister back toward the creek. Now I'll tell you a story. Do you know what Uncle Miles did before he died in our room, all feverish and snotty? He opened a door. Fancy lifted her head and looked her sister in the eye and still couldn't believe it. Shut up. Big Mama told me. Well, she didn't tell me. I heard her talking about it with Aunt Sibylline one day, a long time ago. The door that leads from our sleeping porch to the inner room isn't the original door. The door that used to be there had a keyhole. Uncle Miles put his key into that keyhole and twisted it and twisted it until he unlocked a door. Fancy's hand dropped unconsciously to touch the silver skeleton key dangling from the silver necklace she always wore. Kit and Mata carried their keys on keychains, and Daddy had kept his inside his shoe. All Porterines had such keys. The mayor, an ageless, mysterious woman with mirrors for eyes, gifted them to all Porterines on the day of their birth. Porterines would sooner part with an arm than with their keys. It was as much a part of them as their skin and bones. They were doorkeepers, stranger, braver, and more badass than anyone else in the world. What was on the other side of the door? Fancy asked. Death? said Kit, as though it should have been obvious. Fancy tried to picture it. What did death look like? Not the person, the place. Uncle Miles opened a door, not to another world, but to his own grave. A big hole in the cemetery waiting for him to fill it, and the sight of it freaked him the hell out. He slammed that door and locked it and never opened it again. Anybody who wanted to get into his room had to go outside and circle the house and come in through the porch door. Nobody could open that inner door, even after he died. That's why they had to tear the whole thing out and put in a new door. But it's not like Uncle Miles locked out death. He died anyway. That's what I said. Nobody can escape death. Not even Daddy. If you did go back in time and warn him, he'd probably get hit by a bus or something. Daddy made his bed, and now he's got to die in it. Kit squeezed Fancy's shoulders. I'm not saying it doesn't suck, but sometimes you just gotta face facts. Fancy, who had zero interest in facing facts, pulled out of Kit's grip and plopped down next to some shrubbery near the creek. I don't want to talk about death anymore. She reached in her pocket and removed a worn leather pouch. You want to play marbles? I found a cat's eye the other day. It's pink. She fished it from the pouch. See? Forget that. 
Kit sat next to her, 